see you. Um, I've seen you've brought um, Aubameyang and you've also brought Zachariah. Can you tell us about their availability and um, why Thiago Silva's not joined with the squad? We decided with uh, Thiago that uh, he will have a break from, from, from the travelling and uh, from, from, from the stress after he played every minute so far in very intense matches. So um, it was the moment to to give him a break instead of putting him on the bench and have the, the travel issues. So um, he takes care about his recovery. And uh, then we had the opportunity to take everybody um, who was in training and was available um, to, to, to Zagreb to do our last training here. That includes uh, Dennis and that includes Oba. He had a test with his mask, felt fine, trained normal. So if everything uh, goes well today, they will both be available. Andy Dillon. Microphone there, please. Thank you. Good evening, Thomas. Um, just wanted to change tack, if I may, slightly. Just This is the first chance in the aftermath of Saturday's game, uh, our first chance to speak to you. Um, firstly, I'd just like to know, your goalkeeper was accused of faking injury not once but twice uh, by a Premier League manager during a now famous incident. So I just wonder how you feel about that for Edouard Mendy to be accused of that. Secondly, how is he physically because of what happened? Is he available tomorrow or is he unfit? No, he's available. And I did not feel anything. I didn't hear the, the accusations and... Uh, you know what happened to me when I spoke about the referee. It was uh, pretty, pretty expensive, and I told you after that I will not, I will not comment anymore. And this is what happens right now. It was the yeah, also I don't, uh, I don't respond to David because, like, I can understand his frustration, his point of view, um, and we leave it from there. Okay. Any more questions, gentlemen? There. Kova is a fantastic, fantastic player, of course, but uh, uh, on top of it, he's a fantastic person and personality. Um, Unbelievable good team player. It's a, it's a pleasure to be coach of him. It's a pleasure to, for everybody to be his teammate. Kova is um, a fantastic guy and uh, it's very important that he's with us. It's very emotional for him. He's very happy to be, to be back here. It's, um, it's his city, it's his, uh, it's his country for, for, for which he plays with a lot of pride. So, yeah. We're happy that he's, he's back, um, he's finding his shape, and uh, we're happy that he's back on the pitch in training. Matt Dunn. Microphone at the front, please. Thank you. Um, if you're going to wear a mask, you might as well be a bit of a superhero. Do you think everything's set for Aubameyang to have a special Chelsea debut? Don't, don't, don't put any ideas into Oba's head, please. <laughs> He's, any further ideas, I'm pretty sure he has his own ones, but listen, when he scores, he, is, uh, he, is, he, can, he can celebrate. So, but first of all, he needs to score. But he's the sort of player to thrive in adversity, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he's the sort of player. He's very ambitious, he's very focused, and uh, he's, he's hungry to play for us, and he's hungry to prove a point still. So that's why he's here. That's what we felt from the first moment. And He's uh, happily invited to, to, to prove a point tomorrow. Tom Roddy. Is he enough to start tomorrow if you want him to? And, and from the training session with the mask, is there, is there any issue there? And was he... Um, if, there, if, there, if there will come an issue up today, which there was no issue tomorrow, we will, we will not put him, of course. It's, uh, but there was no issue for him uh, yesterday. And uh, I hope there will not be an issue today. Um, is he ready to start? Of course, I think he cannot play 90 minutes, so it's about <coughs> on us to take a decision how we manage the minutes. That he needed minutes, that he needs minutes to get his full fitness and rhythm is clear, so it's on us to find a solution if he comes from the bench or if he starts. Adrian. 
Thomas, uh, a couple if I may. Firstly, Rhys James signing his new contract today. Can I just get some, some words from you on that? I, I imagine you're very happy about that, first of all. Yes, of course. He's a, a very decisive player for us and he's an academy player. And um, we, we, we told you many times how important he is. And uh, I think his development is far from, from over. There's a lot to learn from him and there's a lot to come. But uh, of course, we're happy to have a key player uh, with us for so many years. To a bit what Andy was talking about there, last couple of home games you've had VAR related decisions. Are you concerned a little bit about, you know, after those decisions have been made, there's been, you know, questions about them and the authorities looking at them, not happy with them, you know, in, in both, both cases. Are you concerned about the state of, of VAR and the decisions that are being made and, and the officials, etc.? <laughs> What can I say now to be to be clear at the same time and not pay a fine again and uh, where where is the line so maybe it's better if other people talk about it because I mean we were now like our last three home games were like I, I don't need that anymore I mean like red cards we are decisions uh, goals given decisions not taken where where it's obvious to take so Speaking about the last game, I understand the frustration, I understand the discussions about this decision. For me, it's not a 100% decision. It was against Tottenham, it was not now. Uh, I was happy that the referee took the chance, got the chance to, to have a uh, review at the situation on the pitch and then it is his decision. We will never have a game without mistakes, but at least he, ta he, ta at least he gave everybody the feeling that he took the decision. Um, and um, yeah, I understand the frustration now is maybe not on me to comment on it too much, but uh, I think uh, the, the quality of mistakes, nobody's happy about that. Okay. Last question, gentlemen at the back. Uh, Mr. Tuchel, uh, Chelsea will be third Premier League club that will face Dynamo in last three seasons. They beat... How many? You are third. Third. Yeah, West Ham last season and Tottenham in that uh, famous game two seasons ago when they uh, went through and uh, they also, also no no uh, arsenal 15 years ago okay. yeah and they beat arsenal does here, not count yeah that was uh, the other team yeah <laughs> but uh, they also <laughs> celebrate against west ham tell me uh, main players of dinamo are here in the team for uh, several years they're a very experienced team how do you see dinamo as as your opponent well, they're used to winning. It's a winning team. They're used to winning. They're used to be on the top. That shapes a certain mentality. They made it through um, through the qualification, which is uh, which is never easy. Um, so they deserve to be here, and I'm pretty sure they will they will um, they will plan to to play a, a very technical, a very emotional game against us. They have quality, individual quality, like like always like every team of, of Dinamo Zagreb and uh, any Croatian team. They have a lot of individual quality uh, up front. They have uh, um, speed and dribblings on the side, on the wings. So we need to be aware of it. And, and of course, they will use the, the role as an underdog to, to try to overperform and make us underperform. This is what this is what's going, uh, this will be their plan. And uh, we are aware of that. And. You know we are we are ourselves in a in a in a moment where we need to improve. We are not fully happy with the results. We are not fully happy with our performances. So we need to take the next step, and it's it's Champions League, which is very exciting. We will um, we will we will um, um, we are very aware that, that what what the challenge is to play in a to play in a first match away in a, in, a, in a group stage. It's always difficult, can always end up in complicated situations, but, but I think it's very important that we accept it and we play a humble, humble match and, and don't, get, um, don't get stuck in our own expectations. So we will, we will accept the fight and we will accept the challenge and then we, we can also have the belief and the trust that we are able to win, but uh, we need to perform for sure. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Thank you, guys.
Pozdrav Mateo. Pozdrav. Lijepo te vidjeti u Zagrebu. Naravno da je dobar dio pres konferencije i Ante Čačića i Tomasa Tuhela protekao, naravno, u spominjanju tebe, otišao si 2013. Luka je čekao samo nekoliko mjeseci da igra protiv Dinama kad je otišao u Tottenham. Ti, evo, devet godina, kakvi osjećaj sada prevladavajući sutrašnje utakmice protiv tvojeg kluba? Prvo, nadam se da su obojica pričali, ovo je lijepo o meni. Tako da, a lijepo je, lijepo je. Čim sam sletio u Zagreb, drugačiji osjećaj, stvarno je lijepo doći tu i pogotovo na Maksimir vidjeti ljude koje koje nisam vidio dugi niz godina i tek sad vidim da sam otišao prije puno, puno godina. Tako da jako lijepo ošće je doći tu. Sretan sam i veselim se s utočnoj utakmici, atmosferu, vidjet pun Maksimir i gušt. Bit će mi gušt igrat. Naravno da sam ja Dinamovac i obožavao sam igra za Dinamo, ali ovaj put sam na drugim stranama i daću sve od sebe za svoj klub. Koliko ti dolazi u obitelji, prijatelja, koliko si karata mora nabaviti? Pa dosta, dosta, ali to su slatke brige, dolazi mi obitelj, svi dolaze prijatelji, tako da svi su baš, svi su možda čak i uzbođeni od mene što dolazi na maksim i što će me moći gledat tu, tako da što se toga tiče malo je bilo puno upita, ali dobro, to je normalno i drago mi je da sam mogao nabaviti toliko karata. Reci mi još jednu stvar, molim te, dosta se sad u završnosti prelaznog roka pričalo o Gvardiolu, koliko su i ti tu možda doprinio da dođe ili će doći ili šta se događa? Pa pitali su me naravno za Joška i naravno da sam imao samo riječi hvale. Igrački mislim da ne treba puno komentirati zato što Joško pokazuje o kakvom se igraču rade i to iz Čelzija ljudi znaju. A... Pitan je njegov karakter i karakter mu je odličan. Vidio sam u reprezentaciji također da s kojom voljom i željom igra za reprezentaciju i kako svaki trening daje sve od sebe. Tako da njegova budućnost je velika i nadam se da ćemo jednog dana biti su igrači i u klubu. Tako da vidjet ćemo šta će se desiti. Tvijel kvijel. Prvo o sebi. Um, how are you fitness-wise, how frustrating has it been that you've not been sort of able to start the season fully refreshed? And, and secondly, about uh, Aubameyang, how has he been looking in training? Has he been scoring goals for fun already? I will ask the second uh, question first. I, I haven't seen him yet in training because uh, he, he trained yesterday with, with the team. So I haven't seen, I haven't seen him yet, but uh, He is a great player, as we know. He scored goals everywhere, so we're looking forward to, to having him in our squad, and he will be a big addition to, to, to Chelsea. And regarding the first question, I'm getting better. My fitness is getting better. I had some problems with, with my knee the, after the national team and in the preseason, so it was, it was a tough preseason for me. But now I'm, I'm recovered and I'm getting better day by day, so, so I need to get still my sharpness and fitness back. But training and games are there for it, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to be better every day. Hi, Matteo. Um, with Oba, is, does he feel like he? Um, does it feel like he's been the player that you've missed so far this season? It's a difficult, difficult question, but uh, I can say that it, he will be a big addition to us because he's a, he's a proper striker and goal scorer, which. Um, which we miss in, in the last years. We haven't had a goal scorer that scores 20, 25 uh, goals per season, which we obviously need to, to, to win the title. So, uh, like I said, we're looking forward to having him in our squad and he will be a big addition, that's, that's for sure. And he's a proven goal scorer. So, so for him, it will be, it's normal to score goals and I'm, I'm, I hope he will do it here as well, Chelsea. Mateo, imali ste prilike igrati ovdje kao mlad igrač s Dinamom Ligu prvaka, kao i vi u karijeri i Dinamo je napravio u Europi značajne iskorake. Kako vidite Dinamo danas u kontekstu sutrašnjeg suparnika vaše ekipe? Dinamo raste iz dana i dana, što nije ni malo čudno jer u Dinamo se radi fenomenalno. Ja to znam iz svog iskustva, tako da oni su u Europi svake godine Ove godine imaju, su s nama u skupini, tako da bit će teško sutra igrati jer znamo kad je Maksimir pun i kad Dinamo osjeti 
osjeti da je publika iza njih kako igraju, tako da sutra će biti teška utakmica i nadam se da ćemo mi biti spremni za to, jer znam, ja znam osobno šta nas čeka, to je dobra atmosfera i Dinamo koji će biti nabrijan i koji će dati sve od sebe. Mateo, zanima me, budući da si sad rekao da znaš koliko je Dinamo težak protivnik, kako su igrači tvoji gledaju na Dinamo i si ih mora upozoriti u smislu Dinamo ipak jako ozbiljna momčad, jel? Pa pitaju me svi zato što rijetko koje od njih igru na Maksimiru i pitaju, znaju da je u Hrvatskoj atmosfera dobra, vidjeli su i utakmicu na polju do Villareal protiv Hajduka kakva je atmosfera i pitaju da li će biti ovdje tako, naravno da znaju da mi Hrvati volimo nogomet i koliko bodrimo svoj klub, tako da znamo svi šta nas čeka i jedan dobar Dinamo sa dobrom publikom i to je dobar spoj, ali mi moramo biti vrlo spremni na to i očekivati tešku utaknicu. Šta si im rekao kad su te pitali o će biti Kona Hajduk ili Real? Rekao sam da će biti bolja atmosfera. Any more questions? No more questions? Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you.